Luis Emilio Ricabaran Serrano, Spanish pronunciation, LWISE Milho Reca Beta Aran, July 6, 1876 to December 19, 1924, was a Chilean political figure. He was elected several times as deputy, and was the driving force behind the workers' movement in Chile. Early life Ricabaran was born in the port of Valparaiso in 1876, to José Agustín Ricabaran and Juana Rosa Serrano. He was of Basque descent. His family was very impoverished. From a very early age, he started to work as a typographer to help with the family finances. Even though he had very little formal education, he was a very voracious reader and was self-taught. He married Guadalupe del Canto, with whom he fathered two children. After the death of his first wife, he married Teresa Flores, who helped him with his political activities. After a trip to Antofagasta, Taltal and Tocapilla, Ricabaran became aware of the extreme poverty and near enslavement of the nitrate workers. He decided to act. In 1894, he joined the Democrat Party of Chile. He became an ardent public speaker and founded several organizations and newspapers to foment solidarity within the workers. He initially focused his political activities on the city of his birth, where he became director and editor of El Trabajo work newspaper. Due to his harsh criticisms of governmental labor policies, he was jailed for eight months. In 1905 he moved with his family to Antofagasta, where he became the publisher of La Vanguardia Vanguard newspaper. Political career On May 15, 1906, Ricabaran was elected as a deputy for Tocapilla to the National Congress representing the Democrat Party. He was prevented though from assuming his position because he refused to be sworn on a Bible, based on his atheism. He moved his family to Aquiqua. Heavily involved in the labor movement, organizing workers both politically and industrially, as a consequence of which he was re-prosecuted by the government and had to escape to Argentina. In that country he joined the Socialist Party of Argentina and in 1908 he traveled to Europe Spain, France and Belgium, finally returning to Chile at the end of that year. After his return, Ricabaran was arrested and sent to jail in Los Andes during 18 months, until August 1910. In 1911 he moved back to Aquiqua where, unhappy with his party and together with a group of nitrate workers, he founded the Socialist Workers' Party on June 4, 1912. Previously, on May 20 of that same year he had founded the El Despertar de los Trabajadores the Awakening of the Workers newspaper to promote his ideas. During its existence 1912 the newspaper was banned several times, but Ricabaran continued preaching his socialist credo from any tribune he could get. He moved, this time to Antofagasta, where he founded El Socialista the socialist newspaper. In 1915 he was a candidate for Congress for Antofagasta, but was defeated, probably due to massive fraud. He then moved back to Valparaiso where he lived until 1916, when he started a tour along Chile all the way to Punta Arenas. In 1918 he traveled to Argentina where he participated in the foundation of the Communist Party of Argentina, becoming a member of its first national directory. After his return to Chile, he participated in the Third Congress of his party, where they agreed to join the Third International and become the Communist Party of Chile. In 1919 he was deported to the south of the country for three months for speaking against the government. He was a candidate for the Chilean presidential election of 1920, where he lost to Arturo Alessandri. At the time of that election he was in reincarcerated so he could not campaign and got a very small proportion of the vote. Nonetheless he was elected a deputy for Antofagasta again in 1921. After he moved to Santiago, he founded and edited La Justicia Justice newspaper. Fascinated by the October Revolution, and after the Party Congress of January 22, 1922 that transformed the Socialist Workers' Party into the Communist Party of Chile PCCH, he traveled to the USSR as the only Chilean delegate to the Union Congress of the Third International that took place in Moscow. He returned on January 1923 to a hero's welcome by the various workers' organizations. Death. Ricabaran, for all his fiery rhetoric, was a very sensitive person. 
After his return to Chile his ideals and projects were bitterly attacked by the majority of the Central Committee of the Communist Party of Chile, who accused him of being excessively soft and liberal and too much in accord with the social democratic ideas and not enough in agreement with the opinions of the Comintern. These harsh criticisms, on top of personal and family problems, caused a severe depression. He refused to run for deputy in the 1924 elections and on December 19 of the same year he committed suicide in Santiago at the age of 48. Topic. External links and references Archivo Luis Emilio Ricabaran in Marxists.org Luis Emilio Ricabaran and Memoria Chilena Jobet, Julio Cesar, 1955. Luis Emilio Ricabaran. Las Origines del Movimiento Obrero y del Socialismo Chilenos, Prensa Latinoamericana. Santiago Whitker, Alejandro, 1977. Los Trabajos y los Días de Ricabaran, Nuestro Tiempo. México, D.F. Bibliography <inaudible> 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 Patria y Patriotismo Antifagasta, 1971 Unidas in Spanish Proceso Oficial contra la Sociedad Mancomunal de Tocapilla, Respuesta a la Acusación Fiscal Santiago de Chile, 1905 Imprenta Mejma, A Poblete Guerin in Spanish El Pensamiento de Luis Emilio Ricabaran. Santiago de Chile, Austral, 1971 2 v Colección Biblioteca Nacional in Spanish. La Rusia Obrera y Campesina Obras Escogidas, Luis Emilio Ricabaran, Estudio Preliminar, Recopilación, Bibliografía y Presentación por Julio César Jobet, Jorge I. Barria y Luis Vitali. Santiago, Edit. Ricabaran, 1965. In Spanish.